All right, what's up guys? So today we got another full workout vlog. We're gonna train some overhead press, some deadlifts, some rows, some other shit. And right now I'm just training twice per week. So in times of my life where I'm very busy and I'm just, I'm just dealing with a lot of other shit, I just cut my training down to twice per week. And really you have to rid yourself of the idea that you need to train much to see great results. And you don't need to give your fitness that much attention to, to have a great effect. You really, really don't. So in, there's going to come times of your life inevitably when you're not going to be able to give your fitness that much attention and focus. And that's completely fine. You're not going to reap the benefits of fitness and being in great shape by being obsessed about it all the time. You want to let your fitness kind of fall in the background of your life. Let it kind of be on the back burner and just let it act as kind of that force multiplier to propel you forward in the other areas of your life. That's when you're going to reap the benefits of fitness. That's what the whole polarity fitness philosophy is about. It's not about being obsessed about your fitness. It's just not, it's not cool. It's not where you're going to get the benefit of being in great shape. So right now as well, I'm really pushing far into my personal bests. I'm really, really um, crossing new pound territory. And one thing that you need to do, and that can really help when you're in this situation, is to cut your volume, cut your frequency down even more. You cut the exercise selection back to just kind of the basics. And really just put more attention into your recovery, your recuperation, getting strong at your, at your key lifts. That's really that's a really effective way to train and it can be helpful as well when you're just really busy because in, inevitably there's going to come a time when fitness is not going to take precedence. There's going to be other areas of your life that you're going to need to give more attention to and that's completely fine. You just know how, you just need to know how to deal with those times and act accordingly. All right, so this is 365 for my heaviest set on the deadlift. I didn't show the warm-up sets, but this is 365 and I got 6 reps. So this is a really really good set. Last workout, I got 360 for six, so I actually linearly progressed. And if you guys watch my recent video about low frequency training, this is the beauty of low frequency and low volume training. It's that you're so recovered, every time you step in the gym, you're pretty much certainly going to hit personal records and get stronger. So I'm, I'm an advanced lifter and I'm still able to make linear progress at some points in my training, especially on like squats and deadlifts. Not on upper body lifts, but on squats and deadlifts, it is doable for periods of your training when you're really resting enough and prioritizing the, the lifts and the intensity. So this is a really, really good set. As you guys can see, I bring a lot, a lot of intensity, a lot of effort. So for people who don't think you, you can make incredible results training just twice per week, you're, you're wrong. Like if you bring the necessary amount of effort, you can 100% make incredible, incredible progress training just twice per week. So I rested five minutes, dropped the weight down to 315 and I'm going for eight reps. So every one to two, uh, all the first one to two exercises in my routine start with reverse pyramid training. So just two sets for each exercise. First set for deadlifts was four to six and then drop the weight uh, about 15%, then six to eight. And that's how I start most of my most of my routines. So that's how you want to start the first one to two exercises with the heavy, intense lifting, push, pushing for progressive poundage, uh, max intensity, and then the rest of the exercises you can do straight sets. But this works really well at the beginning of your workout. So then I rested about four or five minutes, and then I went into the seated overhead press. So once again, I didn't show the warm up sets, but I did two warm up sets, and then I went into one sixty five. So I just recently introduced this exercise, so I'm still finding my groove and I'm not going as heavy as I probably could. So this is 165 for seven reps. So for this exercise, I did the first set six to eight, dropped the weight about 10%, rested about four minutes, and then went for 10 to 12. So I'm really, really fucking with this exercise. I, I feel it really well in the shoulders. And after deadlifts, when the back, the lower back is fried, this is definitely, um, this is definitely a really good variation to throw in. So I've never really taken the standing press out of my routine. So this is the first time I'm messing with a different uh, variation of the overhead press and I really, really like it. So I'll definitely start using this uh, as a substitute for the standing press. But I really recommend if you haven't built a, a strong base on the standing press, then you shouldn't worry about this exercise quite yet. So this is a good substitute to throw in once, you, once you've already built a lot of strength on the standing press. Because the standing press just uses more muscle in, in general. Um, throughout the entire body because it's really a full body movement where the the lower body and the core are involved But this is really just like taking the core out of the equation And it works well after deadlifts because the deadlifts are going to fry your core It's going to fry your lower back so it can help to do the overhead press seated. So I really really like that And then I went into some one-arm dumbbell rows just two sets of 12 reps with 90 pounds So every exercise is just done with two sets and guys 
two sets is all you fucking need. Like if, if you can do, if you can manage more than three sets on an exercise, then you're fucking loafing. I'm sorry. You're not bringing enough effort. So two sets is all you need. And honestly, I'm convinced I could get a lot more done in one set than most people can at five. So that's the point you want to get to. And when you really know how to bring that effort and intensity, you can't train very much in order to maintain consistent strength gains. So this is, this is a very, very effective way to train. I've actually made some of my best progress just, just training twice per week. So I often rotate back and forth. Like half the year, I'll, I'll spend training three times per week. And then the next half, I'll spend training just twice per week. And twice per week is very, very, very effective. So literally just like just two sets per exercise, max intensity. And so for rows and the rest of the exercises, I'm just doing straight sets across. So that works really well. You want to start the exor- start the workout with the heavy lifting on the reverse pyramid style with the top set and then the back off set. And then the rest, you can just do straight sets across, which works really, really well. So I actually took like five or six days off of training just to let my body kind of reset. So that's a cool thing to do when you're starting a new training cycle and a new kind of routine. So like this is new because I've been training three days a week for the past um, six months. So when you're starting something new, it can help to take like like almost a week off training and just let your body kind of recover and get ready for the next cycle of training. And that works really well. So I don't actually do any deloads as, you know, naturally you're going to have deloads when like throughout your uh, training career where basically, you know, sometimes you're just, your body's going to be aching and you're not going to, you're not going to be feeling it. And when those times come, you're naturally going to take days off and then you're going to have days when you're sick. So I don't believe in deloads because I think they just kind of happen naturally. And that's, that's what you have to do. You have to listen to your body. And if your body's like really like you're feeling kind of worn down and your enthusiasm for training is just not there, then just take like five, six days off of training and then reset things. And you're going to come back with a new vigor for, um, for making strength gains. So that's what I like to do. I just play it by feel. Yeah. Just dropping the training down to twice per week right now. And the strength gains when you're training twice per week is fucking insane so that's what i like to do so since i've been really really pushing past my personal bests for the past while um it can help to drop the volume drop the frequency just down to the bare minimum just the basics and really focus on the recovery and the recuperation that can really help since the load is being increased greatly in your training it can help to drop the volume drop the frequency even more so i just did two sets of eight on the barbell curl with 95 pounds so very simple. And then I just did two sets of lateral raises, two sets of 20 reps with 25 pounds. And yeah. So guys, don't let anyone tell you that you have to do a lot of training in order to see great results. All of my routines are very simple and basic and they're very low volume and low in frequency. But since the intensity is there, since I'm training the a handful of the big compound lifts that are the most effective, I'll be getting, I'll be getting bigger. I'll be gaining muscle. So that's what all the, that's what all your routines should be, should be focused on. It's just a handful of the big basic compound lifts that are going to give you the biggest bang for your buck. So the key exercises are the squat, the bench press, the deadlift, the overhead press, weighted pull up, you know, you can also throw in rows, dips. Those are the key exercises. And if you're getting stronger at those exercises, you don't need to do much else, nor can you really, because recovery ability is limited. And when you're really bringing intensity and your primary goal is progressive poundage, you can't train that often. You simply can't. When you're a drug-free lifter, that's just, it it doesn't work that way. So, you know, due to the fucking fitness industry and all these skewed perceptions, people think they have to train so much. But really, guys, if you look back at the way guys used to train back in the day when they didn't have access to drugs and all the excess shit that we do now, this is how they train. It's very simple routines focused on the big basic exercises. You know, just a couple isolation movements per workout. And that's really it. A lot of rest, a lot of good nutrition, and not much machine work. <laughs> only machines were only really introduced like not long, not like very, very, very recent. So this is how it's done when you're drug free. So then I just went into two sets of 30 reps on the neck curls. So this is a 45 pound plate. My neck's getting real strong, real thick. But uh, yeah, I love throwing in some neck curls. You could have like the most jacked physique, but if you have if you have a skinny neck, you just you you you, you, don't, you don't you don't have that look. You know, you just don't have it. You got to get a little bit of thickness in the neck and naturally deadlifts and such will build the thickness around that area and like bulking, but it's nice to throw in a couple sets of neck curls. So that's it for this workout guys. Super simple, but super effective. The intensity's there and I'm pushing for a progressive poundage. That's how it's done. What's going on, Walla? 
why do you put it up to look again? You put it up to work this filming me without me wanting you to film me? It's not on. All right. I'm just placing it there. All right. I'm going to cut your winner and I'm going to add it to the soup. <laughs> okay. You, you don't listen to me. You see. that I tell somebody, eh, go fuck yourself. They get upset. They should really say, hey, it's not a bad idea. Thank you. <laughs> Instead of getting upset. Why? Because if I say, go fuck yourself, maybe they go do it and feel good. <laughs> All right, so it's like 7.30 right now. I've just been working the past several hours. I'm going to go downstairs and cook up a big-ass dinner. I realize I've only had like a 1,000 calories today, and I need to hit like 3,300. So I'm going to go downstairs, cook up a big dinner, some chicken breast, some other shit. And then I'm probably just going to do some reading and then knock the fuck out. I had a late start to the day today, so I only ended up getting in two meals. Usually I like to have three meals, you know, and a snack or two. But uh, yeah, so I had to make this meal pretty damn large. So I cooked, I, I um, chopped up some vegetables, some lean chicken breast, some onions, peppers, garlic, and then I fried that up with some olive oil, threw in a little bit of white wine for the nice flavor. And then I cooked some rice on the side. So this was a massive meal, but this is pretty much what I eat for dinner every single day. It's very easy to prepare, very, very tasty, full of nutrition and micronutrients. Um, but this was, this ended up being over like a two, over 2000 calorie meal. So I ended up throwing in some beans too. Then I uh, put some salt, pepper. Really, really good. So this is a really nutritious uh, filling filling meal. And then I uh, mashed up some avocado, and that was it. So this meal was this meal filled me the fuck up. I was super full, but it was really, really good. So I recommend trying this out. I eat pretty. I eat this pretty much every single day. Alright guys, so I barely finished that fucking bowl of food. I'm I'm basically pregnant right now. I'm so full, but it was good, it was tasty. And that's it for this video, guys. If you guys enjoyed this, drop a like, subscribe. I'm just gonna knock the fuck out right now. And uh, if you guys wanna pick up my free natural muscle building checklist, I highly recommend picking that up. It's a 13-point self-assessment to make sure that you're hitting on all the key principles to building your physique as a drug-free lifter. So it's 13 fundamental steps that is everything you need to know to build your physique as a natural if you're not hitting on those steps you're leaving gains on the table so we'll talk soon peace